and welcome to another episode of Ashley Hayden's Political Breakdown. Uh, this one's going to be slightly different, as you can tell. I've got no guests because I've just come back from Edinburgh. So this is going to be a quick one just with me, um, just to say what's happening over the next uh, weeks or stuff. I've got uh, some fantastic guests coming up and we're going to be looking at doing once a month, doing this live, hopefully at a venue near Allgate, which should be fun. Um, now, just going through what news that we have over the past cup after the past week, if I can find it. There we go. Got the Brexit uh, no deal, uh, the proroguing of government with the Queen's speech being set for the 14th of, or, uh, of October. Uh, they're going to be suspending Parliament uh, at earliest the 9th latest I think it's the 12th so it could well be over a month where uh, we do not have any form of government now this isn't a recess or anything like that that how they're saying this is not something that the government is going to uh, that the Parliament are going to be able to turn away from because this is something that the government have set up via the Queen so the only chances uh, for doing something different will be through the legislation uh, that can potentially come in next week or just after the 14th. Chances are we're heading towards a no deal. Now, people started talking about uh, the Queen and saying, ah, oh, why didn't the Queen stop this? Simply, let's be honest, if the Queen did stop it, how would everyone be feeling? It's not the Queen's job to uh, make our constitutional crisis, if it is indeed a constitutional crisis. I don't know if it is because we don't technically have a constitution. It's just a monumental fuck up by some assholes, isn't it really? Their attempts to power grab, not necessarily a coup, more uh, continual uh, walking towards uh, an authoritarian regime in place of any form of democracy, although you'll have the other side, won't you? The, the people who claim that no deal is the only real deal, apart from it's not, because no one actually voted for that. They're just making up whatever people voted for to make them feel better. Because you'll see that the people who did vote for leave had no idea that we were going to end up like this. That's why it keeps on changing. They're always allowed to change their minds. No one else isn't. Boris Johnson, with regards to this, has said that uh, him doing this uh, is not... He's not uh, proroguing government because of a no deal. And of course you can believe him because he is a trustworthy individual. Just ask the children he won't tell you about or any of his previous wives. Um, I mean, my, my main issue with uh, this and everything that's going on is you've got a couple of folds. Not only do you have a number of people in Boris's cabinet that before Boris said this, and Boris himself said that he was against doing something like this. You had the likes of Sajid Javid, uh, Matt Hancock, uh, in, uh, Nicky Morgan, Amber Rudd, all of them said, oh, it would be disgusting, we can't have this, this would be terrible. All of a sudden, they're incredibly quiet because they care much more about their careers than they do about actually doing something for this country. No one cares much about this country, you know. I know that you've got people marching, but unless you do something like Hong Kong is currently under a 13-week consecutive uh, protest, that's what we need to get to if we actually are going to tr attempt to make some form of difference. Just going out on a day that is particularly nice, going for a little stroll, doing some chanting, ain't gonna do enough. You know, unless you're having a solid percentage of the country going out. Just having like one million people when you've got 70 million in the country, that's not a big percentage, you know. It's not really doing anything. You're not going to change anything about it. Now, uh, Corbyn has, with regards to all of it, Corbyn has demanded a meeting with the Queen, which is really sweet. Not going to happen. Of course it's not. Stupid fucking thing to suggest. But at least he's... I mean, this is the thing... Uh, Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings, because this is this reads of Dominic Cummings' work, they have done a wonderful thing of actually bringing all of the opposition who are against No Deal together. It's amazing. Maybe secretly they are all for 
uh, staying with the EU, but now they're so deep they need to find a new way of doing it. They can't just turn around themselves and lose face and say, actually, no, our original idea of uh, leaving, that's too difficult, so we actually want to stay now. They can't do that. So maybe their idea is to come across so awful and look for such a power grab that everyone will actually get together and stop it and then they can say right there you go fantastic delightful um as i said parliament cannot uh vote against this now why this is different to something like a recess that we were going to be having anyway with regards to the conferences the reason that this is different is simple government and parliament there was talk of them voting to not uh, have the recess so they can just continue doing the work because there's still a lot of work to be done and they could have voted to not have the conferences or have them at a later date or something like this now that it's a proroguing they cannot do that because you do not get a vote to be able to stop proroguing that's why it's when everyone's going along ah oh, we normally have it like this anything we always have a prorogue every year anyway yes but that's normally i think since 2010 or something like that it's been an average of eight days not potentially 34 days or 25 working days this is why it's all going everything is mad at the fucking moment it's currently this is what i this is what i think about it, you know it looks like we're in a process of all of our politics is just a selection of sketches that someone's written just because they don't seem to add together as much as you actually think that they would just like, oh we do this 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 and they're just mental every single one of them's mental you know um a lot of it, as I say, has been set up by uh, Dominic Cummings, who I will get to. The thing you've got Jacob Rees-Mogg, who is political fucking vaginal mesh. Um, he's uh, claiming that the outrage of all of this is phony. It's made up. And if you want someone who knows about made up feelings, speak to someone still living in the 18th century, who believes that love is just giving a handshake to your child once they turn 18. Um, I mean, whether or not it's a coup, I do not know. I think it's a maybe slightly overdone with the words that we are. If we're heading towards a civil war, it may be one of the most twee civil wars ever. That's just going to be set on Twitter and petitions with no one actually doing anything. Because that's the thing, if you actually want to do something, you need to speak to the uh, people who can do something. Because we can go and march and we can go and uh, bang the drum and we can go listen to dance music and dance in front of parliament till the cows come home but if our MPs are not going to vote the way that potentially the people are now feeling then nothing's going to change it's not going to make any difference at all it's just going to fucking give us some cardio um we're going to be going a couple of people are attempting to go to court over all of this of course although uh friday just the other day, um, this, a Scottish judge has refused to order a, a temporary halt to uh, Boris Johnson's plans, although there will be a full hearing on Tuesday. I do not know if the court are going to uh, actually suspend what Boris Johnson's doing. I think they may find that it's a bit above their, um, their remit to do. Uh, owing to the fact that uh, it is, how would you say, uh, it is a parliament thing and not necessarily a law. Like, no laws have been broken in this aspect. Laws are broken in, like, vote leave and everything else, but him proroguing, even for the amount of time that he's doing, isn't actually against the law. So I don't know whether or not, unless they can actually prove that he's doing it, to get a no deal through. I'm not sure if much is going to be done. Um, in other news, you've got uh, Jay Aston, who was a member of Bucks Fizz, is going to stand as a candidate for the Brexit party in Kensington. Because this is where we, as I said, I mean, these are just mad sketches. You know, going like, uh, Boris Johnson is going to uh, prorogue the government. No one knows what prorogue is. Everyone now gets to know what prorogue is. This is where we are. There are so many things that we should never have had to learn what prorogue is. It's the same like we should never have had to hear about Marc Francois. But like the only time we should have ever heard of Marc Francois is when we overheard him saying that he could 
beat up a lion single-handedly or something, get on the front page of the sun. That's when we should have heard about him. Not on TV every two seconds, talking shit. Um, there, on that, there was, a, there was a little bit a little while ago where um, uh, head of Channel 4 News came out and said uh, that um, journalists should hold politicians accountable for lies. And that was considered... Like, oh, what are you talking about? That's madness. This is where, this is where we are. We don't, people lie and we allow them to get away with it. It's ridiculous. Um, Sonia Khan, who was uh, Sajid Javid's media advisor, uh, was escorted from number 10 by police after Dominic Cummings sacked her for allegedly misleading Cummings over her contact with people close to Philip Hammond. Now, Sajid Javid uh, wasn't aware that she was being sacked. So Dominic Cummings is now at a point where he's sacking uh, people from uh, uh, advisors of MPs without informing the MPs about it. So he's going for a full-on, full-on power grab, which is, it may be his biggest mistake there, because if he starts pissing off enough people, maybe they'll grow a backbone. They won't, but you can always hope. Um, he's also, Dominic Cummings, He's also notified Tory MPs that if they vote for the extension legislation next week, they will be automatically deselected uh, before the next general election, even if they are supported by their local office. So now we see what's actually happening. This is the same as uh, we've seen in lots of parties. We've seen it in uh, Momentum uh, at the Labour, and now we're seeing it in Tories with, uh, with Dominic Cummings, it is a full-on, this is my party now. I say what goes. If you do not listen to me, I will get rid of you. This is the same thing that Labour have done many times in their trying to deselect people who disagree with Jeremy Corbyn. This is exactly what Dominic Cummings is doing. And you cannot see one without the other without thinking they're both bad. If you start going along and ignoring the fact that Labour have been doing this for a while, for anyone who doesn't 100% uh, agree with Jeremy Corbyn, or you're only for uh, Dominic Cummings and all of this, you're wrong. You have to understand that they are all bad. Sure, if we get to a point where we have to choose between Corbyn or uh, Boris Johnson, I can't not pick Corbyn at that point, but, I mean, you're picking out a fucking whichever mad bollock you want, you know, the left or the right, either which way, you're still getting a fucking bollock. Um, and uh, when the things that are coming that they're suggesting could potentially uh, solve uh, the issue of stopping a no deal, the National Unity Party, which is their uh, idea that they had that isn't going to happen, because the idea of Corbyn, everyone putting Corbyn in. No one wanted to put Corbyn in. He's, he, he's, him and his supporters have spent a long time calling anyone who doesn't agree with them fucking Nazis, Tories and everything else. And you expect them to all turn around and go, actually, you're lovely. And considering that the party has a big old problem with anti-Semitism, you know, they're going, ah, oh, that's a thing. Where if, if they all decided that if we're going to have a small, a small, uh, National Unity Party for a small, small amount of time, you pick someone who everyone will go, yeah, fine, I suppose, I suppose, but someone trustworthy, which means you can't really pick any politician, none of them are fucking trustworthy. Um, continuing with regards to the uh, government, uh, from the 1st of September, British officials and ministers will stop attending EU meetings apart from those deemed to have significant national interest, such as security, uh, so they can work on things like Brexit preparedness or seize the opportunities that lie ahead. It's, it's a lot like, I'm not sure if you've ever um, been part of a company that is winding down and where they start stop going they go okay well you need to do this to keep up appearances and everything else but behind the scenes they're going well where's Derek oh Derek Derek's off doing other things you know he's got all of this stuff probably looking for another job everything else this is what happened it feels a lot like the UK is winding down 
you know, and it's just childish suggesting that on the 1st of September, we haven't left the EU at that point, still do your fucking job. This is the problem with MEPs that we've had for our ages, none of them do their fucking job. If, it's, if they actually did, then we wouldn't be in this problem, because everyone would know what's actually happening. When you've got the people like fucking uh, Reese Mogg's twatty sister, or Farage, or fucking, uh, what's her name, uh, Widdicombe, that vile cunt. When you send these type of people over, no wonder we want to fucking leave. They want us out. Ridiculous. Um, in better news, in more upbeat news, UK is one of four European countries to lose its measles elimination status, uh, according to the World Health Organization. So we are finally getting back to the times that everyone wants, the good times, the first times. Uh, this is the uh, first time since records started in 2012 that four countries have lost their status. It's Albania, Czech Republic, Greece and the UK. So we're in very good company there. It, I mean, really, we must be heading in the right direction. As of the end of 2018, 35 countries had achieved or sustained measles elimination. This is, of course, you've got the anti-vax bollocks. Why don't they just die? How are they not dead yet? Um... If you know anyone uh, who doesn't vaccinate your, their children, it is actually safer in the long run to just kill those children um, because they won't grow up to, can, uh, to uh, infect anyone else. Um, you've got the Hong Kong protest, as I mentioned, at the 13th Street weekend. And finally, Apple has apologised for allowing contractors to listen to voice recordings uh, of Siri users in order to grade them. So Siri has been recording accidentally, of course, accidentally, uh, confidential information, illegal acts, and people having sex. So I assume they have all been graded. I mean, would, I mean, if they started sending over grades to you, like you, your Siri accidentally gets up, there's you and your fucking partner going at it. You get a text message saying C plus. You would be quite fucking annoyed, wouldn't you? Um, and that's all the news I've got for the week. As I say, uh, I've got some great acts coming up. Some uh, wonderful, funny people that I'm surprised I'll ever be able to get. Uh, also, I'm going to be recording my Edinburgh show. I've got five stars this year. Also got two stars, but forget about that. Uh, fuck you and fuck your beliefs. The 18th of October uh, at the Museum of Comedy. So, uh, we'll catch you next week. Ciao.